What's up guys, Javin back with another video. In today's video, we're gonna be going over everything I've learned about layering in Fortnite endgames. This will, without a doubt, help you survive longer in endgame, get more refreshes, and win more games. Learning this stuff is one of the most important things to getting to the pro level. So without further ado, let's hop into it. To start out, let's talk about the basics of layering. It's really similar to driving a car on the highway. I know not all of you have your license, but just think about it. When driving a car, you need to be constantly aware of what cars are around you. Constantly scouting, that way if you need to turn left, like you know if there's a car to your left. It's really similar in Fortnite endgames. You need to be constantly looking all around you seeing where other people's tunnels are. This will help you, you know, find opportunities to go for plays, find opportunities to cut off players in endgame. But the biggest, most important thing is if you're aware of where the players are, you're less likely to get jumped in on when you least expect it. And now what I'm describing is pretty hard to do, I'm not gonna lie. In duos, both players, the fragger and the IGL should be looking around at the people on the lairs around you to try to keep track of everything. But in solos, this can be a lot harder. This map that I'm playing in throughout this video has helped me out a ton with layering and keeping track of everybody. The code for this map is in the description. It's Lucky's solo endgame map. Let's get back to the car analogy here. When there's cars around me on the highway, I usually am a lot more stressed out. Like if there's cars on all side of me, there's nowhere I can go and I get stuck. Similarly, in Fortnite, if there's people on every single side of you, you are stuck and you are screwed and it sucks. So the goal in Endgame is to keep people off your lair and make it so that you still have room to move. So if there's another team on your lair or another player, you should either be trying to create distance from them. I would say usually having three boxes between you and the enemy is a safe distance, but you could also take the alternative route and spray at them or go for a wall on them. That way you either get the kill or they'll probably back off and get off your lair. You can play this differently depending on the amount of mats you have. If you have a lot of mats, you may want to take the safer route. Out. Now we're going to be going over a lot of examples in this video, like how to get refreshes in certain situations, how to find a good lair in different situations, how to deal with mountains, all this stuff. But the last thing that I want to mention before we get into that is the alpha points in a lobby. This is going to be either high ground or front side low ground. The reason these are considered alpha spots is because one, you can save mats by being at these spots. If you're on high ground, you only have to build underneath of you, or if there's another team on high ground, you have to build walls to block that team. You save so many mats for every single box you move. On low ground, you only need to block your top and your sides. You don't have to worry about underneath you, so you save a lot of mats doing that. The other good thing about low ground is you get a lot of refresh opportunities because every single shambles player typically drops down to the low ground and you'll pick up a lot of kills. It's typically best to go for front side low ground and high ground towards the end of the game, like third or fourth moving zone. If you take high ground too early, you might have other people psychoing your high ground. If you take front side low ground too early, zone might pull in the opposite direction and all of a sudden you're on backside low ground, the most shambles place in the game. So that's why taking front side low ground too early can be a problem, but you could always go up if that situation happens. So it's not the biggest deal. Anyways, that's the basic stuff you need to know about layering. Let's get into some actual examples. We're kind of just gonna be all over the place here, but it should be easy to follow. Let's get it. At the start of this clip here, my lair is really congested. When that happens, I start to scout the lair above me and below me. I hop in the cone and scout this upper lair and see somebody rotating. I take a shot and he's whited. Whenever I get somebody on my lair ahead of me weak, I always tunnel to that and try to get in on him. Obviously, I didn't get the kill there. I threw that, but that's a really good example on one way that you can get refreshes. Spray ahead and push towards that. Literally full tunnel to their wall and jump in. Eventually, I get that kill, and after getting that mat refresh, I see that height's only two layers above me. That's a free height take. I just got a refresh. Height is not very high up. Quick retake, and I'm on high ground. Plus, it's towards the end of the game. That's a perfect time to go for it. Right here is one of those examples where there's players nearby me, and I decide to create distance. The players don't always have to be on your lair. A lot of times the players that you need to create distance from are a lair above you or below you. In this situation, it's the player right underneath me here. I need to make sure that I create enough space to heal up so that this player doesn't drop me into his box. Once I finish healing, that's when I start to look at this player, but I get jumped from two directions and I'm forced to waterfall down and switch layers. I see that there's a player right above me, but not below me. And so I drop down and claim that layer right under me. When I'm waterfalling down, I just try to look around, see how congested that layer is. And if it's really congested, I'll either go down more layers or go back up. 
This clip starts out with me being very healthy and on a good layer. There's someone tunneling above me and to the side, so I go to cut him off since I'm very healthy. But this player ends up dropping. The main thing I want you to look at in this clip is the way I waterfall. When I'm waterfalling, I typically look down and try to analyze the layers underneath me while waterfalling. My main goal when waterfalling is to land on a layer where there are no other players on that layer, and this was a good example of that. Later on, I waterfall again, but at first, this time, I didn't land on a layer that I liked. So it starts about here. I get this kill and this guy gets me weak from behind. So instead of trying to fight that guy off, I drop layers to heal. If we slow down this clip, you can see right as I start the waterfall here, there's a player peeking and then a wood box the layer under that player. I landed right next to that wood box. I didn't know if somebody was in there or not, but I wasn't going to take the risk and I dropped further. That wood box was the reason I wanted to go further away. This clip showcases moving up a mountain from back edge of zone, getting all the way to alpha positioning on the front side. I gotta slow it down a bit to keep up. The first thing I look for is a place where I can just fully ramp up so I can get up layers quickly and freely rather than pushing into the bottom of people's boxes. Right here, looking at this clip, the freest rotate would have been to stick around that right side and just sprint up and cut people off. I rotated through the builds instead. Right here, I jumped through three people builds. The key thing to note is that I jump in a way that I can't get coned by really any of these players. They could have tried to take pump shots, but I went so fast that they didn't have much time to think. The key thing to note about this rotation is I never look back. I'm constantly just placing ramps behind me anytime I know people behind me have angles, but I'm keeping my momentum forward, and then eventually it gets me all the way to the front edge. Right here I saw an opportunity to take front side low ground, smoothest slide of my life bro. So if we bring it back, you can see that right here, there is nobody that's actually tarping forward keeping that front edge of the zone. So that's how I knew I was able to just slide to the front and cut them off. Shortly after getting there, somebody's actually rotating by and I hit them for 120. So then I just get on their wall and 50-50 because I have a major health advantage. Playing this map definitely helps get your decision making to speed up a bit in these end games. Right here, I'm based up in a mid-ground lair, and I see somebody tarping on my same lair. A lot of times when people are tarping on your lair, you can go for kills like this. A lot of times I try to beat them to a specific wall in a box that they're going to be building. When people are tarping, their awareness is down, and you can oftentimes sneak a wall, just like I did on this guy, and get the kill. Paying attention to where people are tarping can get you refreshes a lot. This is another mid-lair cutoff. You can see that I'm tarping on this lair, and there's someone way on the other side of the zone, but on my same lair. As I get closer to the enemy, I know there's a chance that they might try to fight me, or at least that they might try to rotate in my direction. As soon as I see him get close to me and he's in wood, I go for a wall and get some shots on him, and then he dips. And because of that push, my lair is freed up. This is one of my favorite ways to sneak a wall on the opponent. When I see someone tunneling next to my cone, I usually try to sneak a wall on their tunnel. I remember I did this in FNCS last season, and it was one of my favorite moments. If you do this and build with the same material they're using, they oftentimes won't know at all that it's your wall. Right here, I see the opponent in a box above me. I'm looking to get a refresh. I only have wood and I only have minis, so I want a refresh. I simply pressure their bottom and get good amount of damage dealt, so then I go up to their lair and cut them off from there. I usually try to think which exit are they gonna go out and try to cut off that exit. It gets me the kill here with improved heals, so a better chance of winning. This is just an example of a way you can cut off somebody from above. I see this guy tunneling in wood and I'm like, yo, that's wood, that's easy to cut off and break their wall. So I just get to the front of the box and cut them off from there and it was a free refresh. We'll see more ways of cutting off from above shortly. A good tip in general is if you're peeking out of a wall like this, place cones above you. Even if there's not somebody that has visibility on you, they might drop down. But if you place those cones, you're protected and you can 100% focus on your shots. This is a good example of claiming the alpha positioning of front side low. You can see I drop all the way to low ground. There's already somebody down here, but I sprint in front of his box and cut him off from the front. That way this player has the storm pushing into his back and he's forced to come in my direction. Here's another example. I see people tarping underneath me, but they're not all the way on low ground. So I drop down, get a kill on a guy who was shams on the back edge of zone and claim that ulti low ground lair. But I did it wrong here. I messed up. You can see that then I get cut off on the same lair. Right here, after I get the kill, what I need to do is instead of making one box, place floors and cones all out in front of me, all over the place so nobody can drop down in front of me and cut me off. Do that anytime you're on low ground. This is another example of cutting somebody off on your own lair. They just got done fighting in this box and I knew he was going to come out because he needed to go in the direction of the safe zone. So I look at where he's tunneling and I tunnel towards there and cut him off. That is like the typical cutoff play and you should do this a lot, especially in duos. One of the biggest secrets I have for you in this video is building across high 
high ground on the first moving zone. A lot of times people are not looking to fully claim high ground on the first moving zone. So if you sprint rotate or single tarp across first moving zone high ground, you can oftentimes have the freest rotate on high ground. You're still gonna use a good amount of mats by doing this, but a lot of times it'll be a lot freer. Rather than rotating on low ground in all of that congestion, getting over top of everything can give you a new sight line. You can get a lot of kills from up there too. All you gotta be focusing on is blocking off the angles of other players that are doing this as well. If there's too many people doing this, you do need to drop and claim a lair, but oftentimes you'll find freer rotates up there. You can see right here, I knew these guys were weak. I jump in, get the kill, get the refresh, and just go back up to high ground and continue my free rotate. I've only just recently started doing this, so I'm not a complete master with it yet, but there's a lot of potential there. This is an example where there's another player trying to do that exact same thing on first moving. The way I handled it in this situation was I simply placed floors beneath me and above me. I'm still saving a lot of mats by staying on an upper layer, and I continue to aggress the guy that is on high ground until the very end of this rotate, you can see that I actually am able to take the high ground from him. Even when you're not all the way up on high ground, it still saves a lot of mats. But every situation is different. It's not gonna work every time. Let's get into some ways that I get refreshes from high ground. This right here is a good strat. You just drop down on the second person to high ground, the second closest. You get double edits on them and you just keep cutting them off and they usually will keep dropping down. But sometimes you'll actually get some kills doing this if they walk into that box. Another thing that works almost every time if you're healthy is timing the spray into the top of their box and just jumping in. The element of surprise is one of the craziest things in this game and it'll win you so many fights. I had to throw this in here because this was just way too IQ. <laughs> The last bit of footage we're going to be checking out is just some really good fragging from high ground. I was cutting people off with that double edit method. I was pressuring everybody to fall all the way to the absolute low ground and fight down there. This is a prime example of how to play high ground in solos, so I'm going to let this clip play out. I definitely recommend watching how I get everybody pressured to the low ground. I got one special request for you guys. I haven't done a video like this before where I really break down comp footage. Was this helpful for you? Because if it was, I'll definitely get more stuff like this out to you guys soon. I've been thinking about breaking down an entire tourney and my thought process through the whole tourney. I feel like that could be a fire video. Let me know what you think. And of course, don't forget to hit that like button, sub if you're new, use code JIVENTV, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.